to our Sears. Join the cult. Let's talk about tarsiers, probably the weirdest primates out there. Let's look back at our tree. We have strepsorines on one side, haplorines on the other, and here are our tarsiers. Um, now we're talking about tarsioidea. You can see these guys have really big eyes. They live in the islands of Southeast Asia, and they are a rather isolated lineage. Because they've been evolving separately from other primates for so long, they do look a little bit bizarre when we take other primates as our basis of comparison. But really, they're simply the best. I am a little biased. These are the subject of my PhD dissertation, but I hope this will help you understand and learn to love them as well. In the past, when I have asked my students what my name is, one of them told me I was the Tarsier Lady. I'll take it. So tarsiers, first of all, they are nocturnal, and they are also a study in extremes. We see extreme eyes. Just look how big those eye sockets are. Extreme in their legs and also extreme in their tarsal bones. Um, I do also want to note here that unlike other haplorines that have complete orbital closure, tarsiers only have partial orbital closure. It's unsure whether this is simply unique to them or it's just their eyes are too big, they are physically unable to have that full orbital closure. People like to debate about what's going on all the time. Um, but let's look a little bit more specifically at some of these traits. One of the, my favorite facts is that tarsiers are the only entirely carnivorous primate. While other primates also eat other animals, tarsiers are the only one to do it in entirety. You can see this tarsier here is snacking on a lizard. You will more commonly find them eating insects and eat, they will even eat birds when they can catch them. Tarsiers are specialized leapers. Their legs are very long, but they have also elongated their tarsal bones or their ankle bones to make their legs even longer. They also, at least some species, can communicate in the ultrasound. And the Sulawesi tarsiers um, sing lovely songs to each other when they're trying to coordinate to get back to their home tree. But let's talk about their eyes, because there's a couple of interesting things going on here. First, their eyes are larger than their brain when you take both eyes together. Um, they also have a central retina with high cone density, like other haplorines, and they have a mucula lutea with a fovea, and they have this extreme orbital hypertrophy. You can see how big it is because we have two words that mean big, extreme, and hyper. Um, these eyes are just crazy big. Now let's look at a couple of these different species. We have at least 12 different species within our tarsiers, and you can see there's some variations in coloration, but also how fluffy their tail is. There are also a little bit of size differences where some of them are a little bit smaller than the others. But let's look at a map to help better understand where different tarsiers live. We have our Philippine tarsiers, or um, Carlito cericta. We have our Western tarsiers, or Cephalopithecus bancanus. And then we have our Eastern tarsiers. We have many different species of tarsius. You might notice on this map here, some of them are saying tarsius for all species, but we have updated it, and now we believe there are three genera within this group. We do have a basic idea of how these genera are related to each other. Tarsius is basal to Cephalopithecus and Carlito, and we can look at some of the differences amongst them. Um, one interesting thing to look at is the number of chromosomes. Tarsius, or our Sulawesi tarsiers, have a relatively normal number of 46 chromosomes. These guys have 80! And we don't know why. <laughs> that is one of... Um, the questions that fascinates me the most that we aren't entirely sure what has happened in the chromosomal evolution of this group. Um, it's also interesting to look at their the genes related to their eyes because their eyes are so extreme. There are different uh, alleles present in different species that are uh, good for optimal for um, viewing different lengths of light. So. Cephalopithecus bancanus has a slightly different um, ability to view 
uh, light than the other tarsier species. So we hypothesize that there might have been an ancestral polymorphism and potential adaptation to dim light conditions in early tarsiers. But this happened after the eyes already got really big. So we don't really know what's happening with the evolution of tarsier eyes. We just know that weird things are going on. Another fun fact is that Yoda looks strangely like Tarsiers, and according to urban legend, Tarsiers may have inspired some of how Yoda looks today. So, what are Tarsiers, and what traits do they have?